we are the Catalan independentist resistance, and you are listening to a new update from Radio Hadrian in Free Catalonia. Guillem Agulló, ni oblit, ni perdó. Guillem Agulló, we won't forget, we won't forgive. Good afternoon, this is David Rabantos, and this is chapter 45 of Radio Hadrian in its English language edition. As always, thanks to K-Radio for the opportunity of breaking the censorship in Catalonia. Catalonia, until we become independent, is part of the dictatorship called Spain, the same way as Scotland is part of the dictatorship called UK. And it is uh, wishful thinking to think that we live in a better world in Scotland or Catalonia because we just part of Spain and UK until we break free. What the people we have running our countries are puppets and the puppet master is UK or is Spain. This week has been nice for the resistance. We've been growing in support, but it's hard to do this program when UK, United States and France are bombing uh, Syria or have bombed Syria in the last hours. And um, we're also receiving uh, attacks in Catalonia. They've been saying I'm mad for four or five years because I consider, uh, they consider me a threat, and rightly so. But now they've gone one step farther, and they've accused me in public of being a cocaine addict. Because as they cannot attack for five years, they haven't been finding ways to attack what I say, so they have to attack a dominum, and they've gone too far this time. So we're considering taking legal action against them. Um, this program has lots of Scottish orientation in it, though we have to talk about some of the things going on in Catalonia for sure. But first of all, I want to express my disagreement with the position of the Scottish government and of Nicola Sturgeon, which in her tweet has said that this is not going to stop the war, but she thinks of the people uh, in the services, but that's a way of endorsing the attack. So I don't know why the woman who's been considered the most influential of, I don't know, of all times or whatever in the UK, it's just uh, following like uh, a laptop uh, with this attack, just trying to find a, a finer tune, but it's the same thing because this is all based on chemical attack which is not proven sadly and it's hard and they've said the same thing in Catalan television the same Catalan television that lies to Catalan about Catalan leaders went as far as to say that the information about the chemical attack come from an NGO called White Helmets and well White Helmets is not an NGO White Helmets is a cover-up for British intelligence services. It has been set up in Turkey by ex-military from the United Kingdom. And it has links with Al-Nur, which is Al-Qaeda, in Syria. And these people cannot be any source of information to start a war. And the moment television starts mentioning paramilitary organizations, considering them neutral NGOs, and just a few people go to Google or go to Internet to check what they are, it means that human race is too close to have become farm animals that can be milked and can be told what to do, and we have stopped thinking as individuals. So... It hasn't been proven. Another source given is the Syrian Observatoire of Human Rights. Well, they're not Syrian. They don't observe and then don't give a damn about human rights. And because they're some fake organization run by a butcher, and I don't mean like metaphorically, I don't mean a murderer, I mean a butcher. A butcher is the frontman of the, from the Coventry. It's fun because when they don't want to give you the time of day, they send you to Coventry, isn't it? So somebody sent the Syrian Observatoire of Human Rights to Coventry, where Butcher is the frontman for this organization that is telling us what is really going on in Syria. So 
it is too sad to comment. Another Scottish part of this uh, kind of pantomime that the Catalan and Scottish processes have become is this person that had to go to court because in October he entered the Spanish consulate in Scotland and well, asking for freedom in Catalonia and this kind of thing. So the sentence will be given in May. We have to start thinking that neither Scotland nor Catalonia are gigantic open air kindergartens. And it's not about marching and expressing our opinions or something. This is about our leaders having mandates and majorities to declare independence, and they don't do it because they're moles that work for the other side. And uh, if we really want independence, we have to face this hard truth. We have to face that no referendum will bring independence. And we have to start putting pressure on the traitors on our sides, both in Scotland and Catalonia. So, folkloric thing as chanting for Clara um, Ponsati, which happens to be a double agent working for Madrid or the New World Order, is playing what our enemy wants to play. In that field as well, we mentioned that Ahmed Anwar had been instrumental in the false flag attack in Barcelona. We mentioned that he is linked to Spanish mole in Catalonia Anarche. And we said that he is defending the mole Clara Ponsati. Well, no media, surprisingly, had given it the time of day after we mentioned these things in chapters 43 and 44. And bang! Now suddenly in Villa Web, Villa Web, which is run by a pal, by Carlos Puigdemont, they decided to make an interview where Ahmed Anwar could say precisely this, that he was in Barcelona because of a conference and that it was with Anarche. So he can have Clint. It's something that nobody considered important, that he didn't consider it necessary to say. But now, after we exposed him, he has come out using the always to be trusted when you need to lie to the people Villa Web. When I've done this interview, where he kind of explains this thing. So now, in a way, he's clean. We need this program to reach every corner of the world because we're telling truths that keep happening. We told independence was not true and we said that Spain would put their moles in prison to protect them and to push us towards an agreed referendum. And that's the way it's going. I see sadly how my Scottish friends in Facebook keep asking, what would you think if referendum was in 2021 or 2022 and I say tiring, this is tiring because by this time, by now, people should have learned that no referendum is going to bring independence from any country in NATO or European Union, let alone those being part of the UK, which is the favorite uh, sidekick of the Americans when they decide to go in a bombing gun who right? So um, we need to realize that either we want UDI or we don't want independence. And let's not fall into circular arguments. Of, oh, what if and what that? Simple. Referendums don't bring independence to Scotland ever. So if you want a referendum, you don't want independence. It doesn't matter if you think you want independence, but you don't want it because... It's the same thing if, if you really want to climb the Everest, but what you're doing is you're going underwater in front of Benidorm. I mean, no matter how hard you think you want to climb the Everest, but what you're doing, which is diving in the coast of Benidorm, is not conducive to climb the Everest. So, every one of you talking about referendum, this referendum, that you're not talking about independence. You are talking about deception. I'm talking about deception. Uh, well, this week in Catalonia, well, to, to finish with the things you might be more familiar in Scotland, another name this week has been Owen Jones. Owen Jones, some people might think that he stands for human rights and for freedom of countries or this kind of thing, so that's not true. He is very close to Podemos. He's appeared in some political speeches here in Podemos, Podemos. We explained before, is a new world order scheme 
organized by George Soros and Rothschilds and so on to pretend that they want to change the system, but they are controlled opposition, Podemos, and its leader Pablo Iglesias is linked to the false flag attacks in Madrid in 2011, 2004. So um, this Owen Jones appears no less than in the BBC defending the possibility of an agreed referendum, which accidentally happens to be the plan the world has to murder independence, the same way it murdered independence in Quebec and Scotland. But that grows as it is already. I mean, in the BBC, they defend the agreed referendum because the agreed referendum is the way they decided to murder independence in Catalonia. But the example he gives is ludicrous. He says, Catalans deserve to have this referendum because it's like when a marriage doesn't work, you have the right to divorce. Well, you really, as a friend of mine mentioned when he called me, he shoot himself in the foot. Because in a divorce, you don't need agreement from the other side. You just go one-sidedly. Unilaterally, you decide to have a divorce. You don't wait there to see will you reach the agreement. You separate first, and then you negotiate the conditions. So first, we declare, and then we negotiate. We settle the conditions for the breakup, nothing else. Only thing to negotiate is the terms of Catalonia quitting. We've given them two mandates we won. To referendum. We won four times. No more referendum. Any more referendum is treason. The strategy now is to raise tension so they deliver one referendum. Briefly, the news in Catalonia this week is Coop is a splinter party that put Carlos Puigdemont in government. We know for sure, and we have explained several times that Mo, Joan Vives, and Sule Vicens did telemarketing for Coop, that was instrumental in infiltrating Carlos Puigdemont as president of Catalonia. Carlos Puigdemont worked for the Spanish Secret Services. And this was done through a monkey rigmarole in, a, in an assembly where everybody could come in, where the votes were not public as normally in their assemblies, but hidden, where the votes were taken away and for two hours were not communicated. And then two hours after that, they come out and they said it was a draw, 1,515 against 1,515 people. And then a select committee of 60 people would decide if these people were endorsing or not Artur Mas, the former president, which they didn't in the end, surprise, surprise. And that brought in, in something that was planned years ahead, but they pretended it was a last-minute decision, they brought in the mole, the friend of Stephen Bergen, the one that was brought in Girona because the other candidate was threatened with death. Then they brought in Carlos Puigdemont, which later he could kill independence twice in October with two fake declarations. So everything is everything you get there except Radiohedron is a lie. It's a lie concocted to, to keep us in this kind of soap opera or Truman Show that is called politics. Um... There are some new names that keep being invented. You possibly have heard of the CDRs, which are considered terrorism nowadays. This stands for Comité de la Defensa de la República. Well, these people are not set up by the Catalan resistance, so they work for Spain. That would be an easy way to explain. Secondly, they are bringing about tension, and tension is the strategy of Spain to have an excuse, to have mediation, to have a referendum, which is what they need to murder independence. So, they are not for the resistance. They're doing what Spain needs, so it's two reasons to believe they work for the other side. Three, they cover their faces. Well, I've been fighting for independence five years now, showing my face, my name, and they really did everything they can against me, so I show my face. So these people hiding their face, they could be any kind of sort of Spanish police doing these things, so don't follow them. But the most definitive thing is, no less than four known enemies of Catalonia, two of them infiltrated and one of them not, have sided in different ways with these CDRs. One is the Washington Post. That we shouldn't need to explain more. If some mainstream media, which all of them by definition oppose Catalan independence, defends this CDR, it means CDR are rotten. Then we have Mark Serra, which is a, a infiltrated, we have exposed for four years now. And he also says, I am CDR. 
I support CDR. Well, if you are CDR and we know that you are Spain by the transitive uh, property, CDRs are Spain. So that makes another reason to know that. And then on top of that, the Spanish police has leaked some survey, some investigation where it says that the CDR have come to substitute IMC and Omnium, which were the grassroots organizations up to now, which is in fact to promote them. This fake uh, investigation of the police is created just to link it to the unionist newspaper El Periodico. This El Periodico publishes it, and this instantly creates support for the CDRs among the pro indie people. Sadly, it works every time. So, Spanish police and El Periodico, which are some of the main tools of unionism, promote the CDR by leaking a fake. Uh, investigation that says that these are really doing what one should do for independence. Okay, and then we have the Washington Post and then we have Mark Serra. So I'll let it rest there. CDRs are lying to a lot of people, which in good intention they think they're defending Catalonia, but they're working for the other side. Then we have Carlos Puigdemont, the mole that Spain brought in to be president of Catalonia. He is protected by ABC. ABC is a Franco Time newspaper that still stays. And this newspaper has commented on something about Carlos Puigdemont and Jemi Matamala. Jemi Matamala is the guy that pays his tickets while in Brussels. But they've been friends for donkey's years. But this ABC protects Puigdemont by accusing him of minor offenses, which is one of the tricks we already mentioned last week. They mentioned that there's corruption between them, that this Matamala has got three or four concessions to make important fairs in the city of Girona, where Carlos Puigdemont used to be mayor. But they hide the fact that Carlos Puigdemont became mayor because the other candidate got threatened to death. And who was the sponsor but, uh, of surprisingly putting Carlos Puigdemont in uh, in position, none other than this Jamie Matamala. So, if ABC had said that, the infiltration of Puigdemont would become obvious, but of course they wouldn't do that. Because hard as it seems to understand, ABC, Unionist newspapers, Unionist media, Carlos Puigdemont and Spain play for the same team. Then again, Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya, the party that comes from the 30s, the party of Uriol Junqueras, who is now supposed to be in prison, or is in prison, but for the wrong reasons. This party is taking advantage that there's not millions of people in Catalonia listening to this program. We've been saying that Spanish plan is to murder independence through an agreed referendum, thanks to international mediation. Well, the youth branch of Esquerra Republicana has come out and said, uh, blatantly, without any hint of shame, that their plan now is an agreed referendum with international uh, mediation. So, actually, they are exposing themselves as traitors. The only problem is not enough people is listening yet to this program. So, people still might think that they're not. But people marching with them, voting for them, and paying uh, membership for them, it's like they might as well be putting it in Franco organization coffers or in fascistic parties like Vox. This guy in Vox has said this week that under Franco they fusil, they kill people, but it was done with love. Well, this party has nothing to do with the party in the 30s. This party is a party that has been infiltrated by the likes of Junqueras, Marta Rovira, Rufian, and lots of other people. And it's just there to murder independence from within the same way as the SNP is murdering independence from within its And um, the last, well, Ada Colau, the major is on Barcelona, which is a unionist or middle of the way, lost some vote on having several referendums done in Barcelona about changing names of streets, about getting control of the water supplies again and stuff, and she lost it. But she has in the, insisted in the organizations promoting them to try again. But it happens that one of them is Observatory DESC, Observatory Desk, 
which is getting big subventions, big money from the town hall. And you know who used to work there? Yes, Ada Kola herself. And she got her first salary there directly from some money given by the town hall. And she got money from there and other people running Barcelona now come from the same place. And this organization has none other than Amnesty International, the cover of MI5. And if they have another group of so-called human rights lawyers called Iridia, which when they were confronted with my case about torture and uh, kidnapping by stage, whatever, they said they couldn't take the case. So of course, I happened to be the only threat the Unity of Spain had at that moment because we were not an organization. I have done the program, the hardest program against the Ada Colau because nobody dares tell the truth about Ada Colau. In, I said that in Radio Adrian number seven. And I have a clear case of human rights that once is going to come out. And these guys, they don't touch it, of course, because they're in bed with the enemies of human rights. So they play both sides. They play with the offenders of human rights, but they say they're human rights lawyers. And um, with that, we reach. There's been a huge demonstration today with everybody dressed in yellow and in silence. And I don't know how many. We have like so many historic days and so many demonstrations, but we, we are fighting for rights in Catalonia we had 40 years ago. So obviously something's not going right, is it? And this demonstration wouldn't happen if Spain had applied Article 116 of the Spanish Constitution, which is the article that should be applied when, uh, when a part of the territory of what they call Spain declares independence. So they didn't declare 116 with the state of alarm, exception, and siege. And if that happened, we wouldn't have Catalan television to be supporting the traitors, to make people love the traitors. And if that article would have been applied, there would be no possibility of marching because marches, right of demonstration, the union, association are suspended under the laws of those states. So actually, the demonstration today has happened because Spain has wanted it to happen. Why? Because it forms part of the Spanish strategy of rising the tension, of calling international attention, and of making the prisoners, because this demonstration is for setting the prisoners free, prisoners that all of them are accomplices of my uh, kidnapping and torture. They all knew of it. Some of them knew it for 30 years. Some of them are in my Facebook uh, list where they saw that I was being detained and tortured. So all these fake prisoners, all these fake um, represalized or all these persecuted people, uh, we're going to see this demonstration and a lot of people in good faith are going to go in silence so we don't shout independence. And we're going to be one step closer to this damned mediation to make closer the moment when an agreed referendum is going to murder independence the Scottish way. But we are Catalan resistant. We are Directa Sushanta with. You can um, follow us in all social media. We are growing in strength. We're not buying the official lies that our television's party's president. We've given them a rundown in this program. Everything, everything in the people love works for the other side. So it's time for new parties. It's time for new leadership. We stand focused. We are winning. We're going to win. Visca Catalunya Libra. This has been another update from the Catalan Independentist Resistance from Radio Hadrian. Remember that you can follow us on social media, either on Facebook, YouTube, our Twitter account, Instagram, Google, Telegram, and also on Evox. E